uh, the COVID protocols continue to be that random flash of lightning, just like injuries. I mean, we've just come to accept it. There's so many things that if you're going to follow the NFL, it's not like you have any alternatives during football season, other than college football, but people do both. There's no other pro alternative. You just got to accept it. Injuries happen. We know that. Now these COVID positives or close contacts happen. We just accept it. And yesterday, if you're a Chargers fan, you were chagrined to find out that both Joey Bosa and Jerry Tillery landed on the COVID-19 reserve list. The good news, although it's kind of bad news, Joey Bosa is not vaccinated. Apparently, it's a close contact, so he could be back in time for Sunday night's game against the Steelers. And logic would tell me that maybe Tillery tested positive and Bosa was a close contact. And again, if you're vaccinated, you don't get knocked out. If you aren't vaccinated, you're gone for five days. And you do the math, Tuesday, Sunday, five days, he could be back in time for that game. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it it does – hey, we're seeing this pop up more and more right now. I guess it makes sense. It's getting colder. People are inside. I feel like everybody's guard has gone down a little bit. You know, it does seem like it's, uh, you know, of course, still very prevalent in our country, but less, less than. I mean, certainly. I don't even know what the numbers are right now or anything like that. So I think people are being a little bit more free. But, I, you know, I will say players got to remember, you know, that it, it still could cost your football team. Just like being unvaccinated cost Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you make a stupid mistake and go, hey, I'm going to a bar and packed in there with, you know, 150 people. You know, that's an equally bad mistake. I mean, it is as far as the competitive advantage it does for your football team. I do think players have relaxed a little bit. You know, I, I'm, I'm surprised that we're seeing it so much right now. Um, but, yeah, big deal. Big deal. Big deal for the Chargers because they're not playing great football right now. You know, they're, they're, they're all over the place. And I think the big thing is, of course, their opponent with the Steelers coming into town this weekend. We know, okay, yeah, Mason Rudolph, Ben Ru- Roethlisberger, they're not a great passing offense anyways. They want to run the ball. They need Tillery and Bosa. The Chargers are the worst run defense in football. There's not a lot there. They need those guys to be disruptive. So uh, it's going to cause some issues for them on Sunday night in an area where there's already issues. And, of course, you know, right now, where do they stand? They're seventh in the seed, in the seeding in the AFC. Uh, yeah, they're fighting for their lives here and not playing great football on either side of the football. And uh, it's a big blow to their football team. And it is just this random, vague wind that can blow through any team facility at any time. And maybe it'll be isolated. Maybe it'll be more than that. Maybe there'll be more positives today. But for now, Tillery and Bosa, both on the COVID-19 reserve list. I had someone who has a position of significance with one of the 32 teams raise a question yesterday. Now, we don't get the same kind of transparency for the people who aren't, you know, in the in the direct pipeline of the football operation like players and coaches. Right. There are plenty of people behind the scenes who can test positive as well. My understanding after communicating with this person is that the the rate of positive tests for non players who have been vaccinated is much lower than the positive tests for the players who have been vaccinated this year. And the person asked me, why do I think that is yeah. and on one level? You could say, well, maybe they're out doing things and they're out and about, but you know, they, okay. You know, maybe they're younger and they're going to be more likely to go. There is a belief. And so wait, just I know say, that say, before you go down there, so explain it to me one more time. Say it to me again. You're saying they the rate is higher. The players the- are testing. The players who are vaccinated yeah. are testing positive more frequently than the non-players in a football organization who aren't. Gotcha. Okay. There we okay. go. Thank you. So Sorry. we operate from that premise and we try to understand why. Yeah. Right. And there's been some reporting on this a couple of months ago. My understanding is that ESPN outside the lines may or may not have, have been doing something with. There, there is a belief that there are players who have fake vaccination cards. And it oh, depends sure. on what state you're in. Sure. It's easier in some states than others to pull it off. But it's gotten to the point where some teams have done their own internal audit right. before the NFL shows up and starts double checking the accuracy and validity and veracity of vaccination cards. But the theory from someone who's been keenly aware of this issue all season long is 
players generally, and I'm not naming names, I'm not singling anyone out, just generally vaccinated players are testing positive at a higher rate than vaccinated non-players because vaccinated players, some of them, aren't really vaccinated. Well, I, I could, I, I could believe that. It. I could believe that. I, I listen. I, I know, I know quite a few people who were, and I don't know how it really ended up. I don't. I didn't follow up. But when this all came about, as far as getting vaccination, the vaccination card, you know, here in the New York, New York tri-state area, you know, you have to show a vaccination card when you go into a restaurant. That's standard protocol right now in New York State. It's not like that in Connecticut. And I think there was a rush here in this area, you know, where, yeah, people who weren't sure about the vaccination yet or whatever, they were trying to find ways to get, you know, yeah, dupes, get a fake card, uh, fake their way through it. So I could see that. I think when you couple that maybe with guys not actually being vaccinated and Mike, our old, you know, tale of time when I used to be sitting at my, you know, house doing this show with you. Uh, 99 out of 100 football players don't give a damn about COVID. They don't care. They got the vaccine so they could play football and say they're doing right and probably have peace of mind. But the next day they were in a small room playing Xbox and drinking beers with the team. And the next day after that, they were somewhere else with the team in a bar, whatever. So I could see that there's a little bit more of a renegade personality with an NFL football player, as we've discussed before. And I think there's a little less fear of that, especially because, like you said, they're young, they're healthy, and most football players feel like they're indestructible, you know, when they're around the age of 24, 25, and 26. And I think that is the key to understanding the vaccine hesitation by some players. It's one thing to get your Toradol shot because you know that the Toradol shot is definitely going to help you play when you otherwise are riddled with right, pain, right. even though you know that there are very real, or you should know by now, long-term risks to your kidneys and other internal organs if you use Toradol Definitely. beyond a certain extent. Right. But if you truly don't believe that COVID is going to affect you, it's not going to touch you, you're just going to have the sniffles for a few days, and you hear all this talk about nanotechnology and all the craziness that's out there, and you've got people in your immediate family or people in your community who are saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, and you've convinced yourself that COVID isn't going to affect me, why am I going to do it? I, I Again, I disagree with that approach i think everybody should do it but that would explain why there are players who feel that way and then you take it the next logical step i mean i've looked at my vaccination card how hard would it be to print one off of your computer seriously it's, it's not, not it's that not complicated like I was, license. yeah it's not like a five dollar bill We're, it would you, be very easy to counterfeit a hundred percent like weren't you i was so unimpressed by it when i first saw it i was like this is what we're talking about uh, a, a piece of paper with a, a a little bit of thickness to it or cardboard underneath it and just a guy at the pharmacy writes the damn number on there, and then that's it? That's all we're doing here? Yeah, I, I was surprised by that, too. There doesn't seem like there's uh, a great checks and balance system behind this whole thing here. Uh, but I think you kind of hit it you know, on the dot there. I think a lot of players look at it, too. You know, They want to they get COVID through natural immunity and have their body deal with it that way. And I understand that. I do. Again, you know, I was somebody that was leaning that way myself at one point, you know, but but at the end of the day, of course, I changed my uh, my stance on that. And listen, I'll be totally transparent. I got the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Why? A little bit because of what you said. I, you know, the the MRNA and the nanotechnology and all that. I don't know. So I got one that was the old school. Uh, I did. I mess that up, probably. Uh, but yeah, I got the old school vaccination and J and J to where it's just, hey, this is the way we've been doing it, you know, throughout our lifetime, and that made me feel comfortable. I know to each his own, but I think that's a little bit behind the logic of uh, what's going on there, and the logic that that any of us are doing anything that Bill Gates would even remotely give a crap about is what is amazing to me. How delusional and self-absorbed we are as a people that we actually think what we do is interesting enough to Bill Gates oh. to track us. Oh, I, I know. Oh, meanwhile, I meanwhile, meanwhile, we, we carry around everywhere the thing that lets them track us 
It's just not in our body. Hey, Mike. You know, it would be a hell of a lot easier if it was in my body. Is there a way I can turn this into nanotechnology so I don't have to remember to pick the damn thing up? And all <laughs> right. I have to do is blink, and I can see, right. uh, you know, I can see my apps. That'd be great. And you know, it's just a matter of time before that's how it's going to be. Hey, there's, there's, there's people still in Dallas waiting for JFK Jr. to come out and run for a president. A lot of people. Okay, so it just, it just tells you how gullible and crazy people can be, and what they read, they think it's true because I read it. I, I can read it, so it's true. Nobody would actually write something that's not true. What? Yeah, so that's where, where we are as a little bit of a culture right now. A lot of gullible people on social media. I feel like for whatever reason, our civilization needs to have that bizarre white whale conspiracy that just lingers and becomes part of the zeitgeist, right? Elvis is still alive. Well, we've gotten to the point where, you know what, even if, if, if Elvis was still alive, he'd probably be dead. Yeah. So JFK Jr. is still alive. Right. So we'll ride that horse until we get to the point where, you know, if he really was still alive, he'd probably be dead. And then it'll be somebody else. And, and, and it'll just, there'll always be that one big name who's dead, who isn't really dead, to fill some weird defect in our DNA. Some of us, some of us, fortunately not many, that require us to have this fascination that somebody who they're telling us is dead hell. Before that was Paul McCartney. It went from Paul McCartney to Elvis to JFK Jr. Yeah. Who's it going to be next? Prince? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. It is. It is. Uh, but that's where we are. Can All we right. start that one? Prince is still alive. Can we start that? <laughs> Go ahead. Start it. You, I wish he still was. Like it's I like he you. is with you, all the music that he has. And if you, He's uh, releasing I, I, it. He's releasing music. He's a Vikings he's fan. He was purple. He's like a Vikings fan like you. I understand it. Start it. Go ahead. Get it going. I mean, if let's go crazy, literally. We already are crazy. Let's really go crazy. Prince is still alive. We started it today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.